Thank you very much, Ken. Thank you for joining us. Ken Nakamura is the CEO for GMO Trust, and uh, we're delighted to have him. I'm Douglas Borthwick. I'm the Chief Business Officer at INX Limited. And today we're here to discuss the GN and Z dollar. These are two staple coins that we're going to be rolling out over the next week with a couple of pairs being added each day um, against Bitcoin and against the US dollar, against GN and obviously against the Z dollar. Ken, thanks for joining us. Can you tell me something about, it looks like you're a mute. Can you tell me something about uh, GN and Z dollar? Like why is Z dollar any different from let's say USDC or Tether? Yeah, good morning, Douglas. And uh, first of all, thanks for having me on uh, this morning. So ZUSD, I think, um, from, from a regulatory perspective and how, you know, Gary Gensler's uh, talking about it and SEC starting to sort of really look closely into how they would regulate, regulate stable coins. I think we see ourselves as the, the only true stable coin that is backed 100% uh, by the fiat currency. So we don't, it, it's, um, it's obvious to us that it's not going to be a security um, that, you know, everything uh, hasn't really firmed up yet uh, from how SEC would regulate this or how they would define stable coins. But the way we see it, I think stable coins should be defined as an asset uh, or a cryptocurrency digital asset that is 100% backed by a fiat currency without any, you know, any of the customer asset uh, flowing into money markets or commercial papers or, or you know, uh, other um, assets. Um, so I think that is the biggest differentiator and um, the way we're regulated, uh, you know, we, we are regulated as a limited purpose trust company by the New York Department of Financial Services. And, um, you know, having that strong compliance program at the bank level, internal policies and procedures uh, that we operated, operate under. So this is um, the biggest differentiator uh, between us and the other stable coins out there. That's huge. And I think what you're referring to is when Gary Gensler was sitting in front of the Senate and he was asked, um, you know, tell us, you know, what is a security with a stable coin? And he said, look, if a stable coin is backed by securities, then it's a security. And I think a couple of months before that, let's say USDC or Circle had come out and said that they are backed by money markets and fiat, obviously. But the Z dollar is only uh, backed by US dollars sitting in a bank account somewhere, I'm sure. And then the GN is only backed by yen. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, I, I think recent, you know, recently SEC um, had started investigating uh, publicly on USDC and how their how their assets are backed. And I think at the time, uh, Circle was saying sixty percent is cash or cash equivalent. Um, and then there's some in the treasuries, or, uh, you know, overnight treasuries, um, some in the commercial paper, et cetera. So I think, you know, out, out of, uh, sorry, 40% is not a cash or cash equivalent, right? So, uh, you know, at, at this point, I think, um, I, I guess it would be considered a security. Right. Interesting. So it's exciting. Like, this would be the first really real stable coin that's ever existed or, or traded certainly in the Americas for a foreign currency. So everyone's used to stable coins for US dollar. Um, it's sort of like, you know, you own Bitcoin, you want to get out of Bitcoin, but you don't want to go into fiat. So you go into USDC, it's sort of like a, a way for you to hedge yourself somewhat and then you go back into Bitcoin when it comes back off. And, you know, people use it back and forth, you know, I guess, as a safe harbor. But GN will offer the same sort of thing, but instead of having exposure to the dollar, you'd have exposure to yen. So if you think that dollar yen that's trading, what, around 111, 112 right now, is going to go to 110, let's say, well, then rather than putting your money into a, a dollar stable coin, you put into a yen stable coin. So that's sort of one way it can be used. But obviously another way would be, you know, the FX trader that wants to speculate somewhat and thinks the yen is going to appreciate, then they would buy the yen stable coin. If they think then that the dollar is going to appreciate, they'd sell that yen stable coin and buy the dollar stable coin or buy dollar fiat. So that's like, you know, the FX speculators and GMO understands the FX speculators well, because you're the largest foreign exchange trader in the world, I believe, you know, for retail FX. Can you, can you comment on that? You know, like, like how big are you guys? That is correct. So our FX arm, GMO Click and Securities, uh, they have been they have been doing uh, the you know 
the largest volume for the past, uh, I would say, eight or nine years, uh, consecutive uh, years. Um, so we uh, currently process around $1 trillion a month uh, for, for across all of the FX fairs. Um, I, you know, FX uh, market in general is by far the largest uh, financial market in the in the industry. Uh, it has about seven trillion dollars a day in volume, um, and then JPY accounts for about you know sixteen or seventeen percent of the overall volume because it's the second largest or second liquid uh, fiat currency in the world. Um, and just looking at the U.S. dollar JPY pair, it's the third most liquid uh, currency pair. Um, so that being said, I think there's a lot of opportunities out there uh, for people, for more sophisticated traders that are looking both into crypto and the, and the FX market. Like you said, Douglas, you can get in and out uh, from cryptocurrency trades uh, using stablecoin. And you can also hedge against the U.S. dollars because... Uh, Historically speaking, JPY has been seen as sort of like a safe haven uh, fiat currency against the dollar. Um, so I think it, you know, it's a really good way to hedge uh, within both crypto and the, uh, you know, the currency. I just want to go back on. You, you said you did one trillion dollars. Is that in a month? A month, yes. Right, so if it's six trillion dollars a day, the FX market trades twenty days a year. So that's 120 trillion, and you're doing one trillion. You're doing one one hundred and twentieth of all of the foreign exchange market globally. That is correct. Mm -hmm. that, that's pretty astounding, absolutely astounding, and it's very exciting. And now dollar yen trades 750 million dollars a night. In a relative uh, sense, Bitcoin trades around 40 billion dollars a night. So, you know, the FX market's absolutely huge, and we're excited to be able to introduce a digital version of FX for the FX traders out there that want to now get involved in that. But, you know, stable coins are much more than that. If you look at the use of stable coins today, they're mostly being used by corporations for payments purposes or by institutions for M&A purposes, because you don't have to deal with back offices. You don't have to deal with Nostro bank accounts. And I'll give an example at Morgan Stanley. I think we had 220 people. We made a billion dollars, but 200 of those folks were in the back office, making sure that, trade settled correctly in two days time in all these bank accounts we had all around the world. But with the stable coin, you don't need all these bank accounts. All you have to do is have a, a wallet. In this case, it's an ERC20 uh, based uh, stable coin. So you just keep it on your MetaMask wallet and that's your, your, your exposure then to the yen. Yeah, and that's exactly. That's yeah. a sense. So if, if I if I'm if I'm someone that has I know that I have obligations that are going to have to be paid in yen in a, in a year's time, I've got choices. I could buy yen in the forwards out one year, or I could buy the stable coin and just hold the stable coin in my wallet. I don't have to open up the bank account. I don't have to go through the rigmarole there. I don't have to deal with forwards. I don't have to deal with forward with the carry differential. I'm just holding the stable coin. And if I want to get yen in a year's time. I could either go on an exchange and we're not offering the yen stablecoin against the yen yet, but we will by then. But otherwise, someone could just go directly to GMO, say, here are all my stable coins in yen. And you would do a transfer immediately. You take those stable coins in and give them and send them the yen and wire it overnight. Yeah, that is correct. And, um, you know, be, because JPY, Japanese yen, is a negative uh, yield currency um, from a... If you have a bank, a JPY denominated bank account outside of Japan, you would have to be, you would be paying a negative yield on that. Um, explain that. Us, so I'm paying the bank for them to keep my money. That is correct. Yep. If you're, if you're using an offshore bank account outside of Japan, of right. course, Japanese citizens living in Japan using Japanese banks, we don't pay any negative yields. But if it's outside of Japan, yeah. Um, you will that, be, uh, yeah. That negative carry is just going to get worse if there's inflation in the U.S. and the Fed was to start tapering or raising rates. Absolutely. Yeah, right, right now, I, I see it as being it's like negative 20 basis points over the next five years today. But as soon as the Fed raises rates 25 basis points, it becomes negative 45 basis points. They raise another 25. Obviously, it goes up and up. And, you know, so 70 basis points can add up after a while. And, you know, I think that people need to understand that. And if you think there's inflation going on in the world, 
And I think we can look at oil prices as a good example of that, food prices, college prices, really any price that you want to look at, there's absolutely inflation. I think 40% of all of the dollars that were in circulation today were printed in the last six months. That tells you there's inflation. So if inflation is coming, the interest rate differential is going to get greater and greater, then the yen stable coin makes a lot more sense to hold rather than the actual yen currency. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we, we cover the negative yields for, for the holders of GN. So if you're, you know, yeah, if you're holding GN instead of the actual physical JPY, uh, you're, not, you're not paying the negative yield, no negative carry, right? We, we cover that for you. Well, um, and what, we, are you gonna, what are you going to do if, if the U.S. raises rates by 250 basis points over the next two <laughs> years? Would you change yeah. the policy or is that something that you've got sort of a hedge in place whereby it's sort of something you can handle anyway? Yeah, so we, we just got started uh, in March of this year, right? So we are uh, looking into multiple strategies there. Uh, you know, if the rates significantly increase, we, we probably would have to think about uh, what we should do. Uh, we don't have a, I don't have a definitive answer for you at this point. Uh, but for us right now, the focus is that we, we want GN to be access, accessible um, to anyone in the world. Um, and just, you know, in general, liquidity is the most important thing, uh, right? So we're just laser focused on that. We're willing to cover the cost um, so that uh, people can start using it. Um, and we'll think as we go. Great. And uh, so, you know, GN against Bitcoin, that's something that we're going to go live today on. Um, actually, no, we're going today we're going live with Bitcoin against Z dollar and Z dollar against the dollar. And then we'll be having uh, Bitcoin against GN, Bitcoin against Z dollar, and then doing different pairs as well as we go through over the next week. Um, and I think that that's going to be pretty exciting. I think a lot of it, though, is going to be getting the word out. And, uh, you know, we're getting the word out, obviously, with doing AMAs like this, and we've done a couple of ads here or there, but you're also going to go through your distribution network throughout Asia, right, and, and tell people about what we're doing here and convince people, or not convince, but kindly suggest to them that they come over to INEX. Yeah, that is correct. So GMO Internet Group has a total of 100 companies affiliated, um, and we have about 20 to 30 uh, companies that that is outside of Japan. We primarily focus on the APAC region, obviously, because we're a Japan headquarters company and we have a very strong footprint there. Um, and, you know, within GMO, we work very uh, synergetically. Um, so we cooperate, collaborate uh, with the, between each of the companies and we are doing an outreach to, uh, you know, companies that are relevant uh, to our business. Like we have, you know, other financial related institutions outside of Japan, like Thailand, Singapore, uh, Hong Kong, et cetera. Um, so yeah, wh whoever uh, is relevant to our business, uh, they will be notified within uh, with the INX GMO partnership. That's fantastic. And stable coin in general. We need a lot of educations on what stable coins are, how these can be utilized within your business or within your personal investment portfolio, whatever it is. Uh, it's just a digital representation of a fiat currency. So, um, you know, take advantage of it. Now, there's a lot of questions coming over under the comments section. I don't know if you see comments on your, your screen. There's private yep. chat. And there's, if you click on comments, some of them are in Japanese. My Japanese is a little rusty. So if there's any, if any of these are actual questions, then feel free to interrupt me and tell me what the question is and then, you know, give it, give an answer. Yeah, well, uh, will do. Uh, so far, it's just comments. One person is saying, Douglas, you're a handsome guy. <laughs> Only one. So, you know, I, I think that now foreign ex I, I traded foreign exchange for about 25 years. Um, and I ran some trading desks at Morgan Stanley, Merrill Lynch. I ran a proprietary trading desk. You know, I loved trading in dollar yen, but I know that the retail guy normally trades dollar yen with leverage, you know, because it doesn't really move that. It don't move 10% in a year, but for it to move any kind of large percentage compared to, let's say, a Bitcoin or something like that, it doesn't really move that much. So I think that there'll be retail interest in GN for sure as a, and in Z dollar as a safe harbor, um, and maybe as a small speculative investment in terms of, I think that it's going to go lower, but because we don't offer leverage on our platform, it, it, it might not attract the hordes uh, of, of retail FX guys. But I think that if you're doing payments and if you're an institution, 
in the Americas or elsewhere, and you want to deal with a regulated entity to buy a regulated stable coin, and, and your choice is for your hedging purposes or for your payment purposes, that you can either buy the yen underlying the fiat, or you can buy the stable coin. The stable coin seems to be the easiest way to actually hold the yen. And I think that that's really interesting. Now, you've, you've been in this business with GMO Trust for, for years now. I mean, can you, can, can you give us any idea of institutional interest? You know, institutions you've talked to, you don't have to give any names, but what kind of institutions have, have approached you or have you talked to about stable coins? Yeah. Um, so institutions definitely like uh, that we are uh, regulated by the New York Department of Financial Services. And, you know, the comp compliance is the biggest piece for uh, any institutions. Um, and, you know, a lot of FX, traditional FX shops, uh, they are actively looking into, you know, other options to settle instantaneously behind the scene so that they can, they, they can make their trades more efficient. Um, so, you know, FX trading shops, clearing houses, uh, those guys are really looking into it um, and just, you know, assessing the overall, uh, you know, risk, uh, mostly from the compliance. And, you know, there's, there's certainly an uncertainty around regulatory framework right now, uh, especially at this time and uh, at this time that SEC is like really talking about it. Um, and other regulators around the world is starting to really looking into it. Um, but I think all of that is, once all of that is cleared, um, I think it's going to be a sprint to the market uh, with a lot of these uh, FX trade, uh, trading shops uh, getting into the digital space um, and actively uh, trading uh, the currencies. So I think right now, um, in terms of like stable coins that are backed by a fiat currency, they're not, there's not too many, right? Japanese yen is one of them, obviously. Uh, there's Brazilian real, Indonesian rupiah, uh, Singapore uh, dollar, et cetera. And I think, you know, from what I can think about off the top of my head, there's like less than 20, right? There, and there's, there's going to be a lot more development uh, within the stable coin space. And, you know, once that is fully set up, um, there's no brainer that these guys or these institutions are going to start using uh uh, making FX trades in a digital form. Right. And FX trades are done, like, let's say I'm, I'm 40 act fund. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a guy in Boston, and there's a lot of these real money companies in Boston. Now, they do FX trades, not just for speculation, but for hedging purposes, too. You know, maybe they buy a Japanese product or Japanese stocks, or maybe they sell Japanese stocks, but they still have Japanese yen exposure. They're going to be interested in coming in and buying stable coins in order to manage their exposure. And I right. think that's obviously something that you may have had conversations with, with these people. I don't know if you've talked to BlackRock or Wellington or Alliance Bernstein, but for them, the individual trading desks are constantly buying and selling Japanese securities, and they've got a choice. When they bought that Japanese security, maybe they bought dollars and sold yen on the back of that. And they've got that sitting, you know, that, that's a trade they have on in their FX, but they're not sure that they want to unwind it. If they unwind it, they've got to pay the bid offer spread on the forward. But if they just did the yen stablecoin as a hedge against their hedge, then what that means is that they can get in and out of it very, very quickly without having to pay the bid offer spread on the forwards. Mm -hmm. And that's something I think that people haven't even thought of. But the real money companies are buying and selling Japanese equities all day long. But they're changing these FX spreads all day long, too. They have to buy it. They have to sell it out one year, buy it out one year, sell it out one year. And all of this is this, what you call a negative carry, that's forward points that they're losing. With the yen stablecoin, they don't have these forward points to worry about. So they can use this as interday hedges, as opposed to having to unwind their whole one year hedge on a constant basis. And I think that that's something that people just haven't even put their heads around yet. The amount of volume that could happen there in a stablecoin, for the yen stablecoin specifically, as opposed to anything else. I think most of the time people are looking at the yen stablecoin and saying, well, look, this is a retail product. It's not retail. The majority of FX trades, you know, well, you just certainly take up a big chunk of them. But other than that, outside of yourself, it's mostly institutions that are buying and selling Japanese equities and then hedging that back and forth all day long. On top of that, you've got corporations that are buying products from Japan that need to buy yen to buy those products. Let's say I've got 
electronic products that I'm buying from Japan and I need to buy them every single quarter and I need to make sure I've got the yen to do it. If the yen was to strengthen from quarter to quarter, that's going to hurt me. But if I buy the yen stable coin today, I'm hedged. I've got my yen. And if the yen strengthens, the yen stable coin strengthens. And I think that that's another thing that folks need to understand is that this is something that's going to be very interesting to corporates, to institutions, to hedge funds, but also to the real money funds. And that's where the real volumes come into this type of play. I mean, I hear of the $750 billion a night in dollar yen. You do a big chunk of that, but it's the corporates and the real money guys that do a lot of it as well. Yeah, really good point. Um, yeah, and I think um, stable coins are really relevant for spaces like trade finance too, right? Uh, you know, letter of credit are being uh you know are, are put onto the blockchain and there's a lot of uh, pilot programs running uh to actually make all of these uh you know manual flow uh in a digital format and uh w you know within that context or within that workflow if stablecoin can be a part of it all of these you know issuance of letter of credit uh actually sending the fiat uh, fiat currency uh, to the buyers or or, or the uh, you know seller, uh, these are these can happen really instantaneously through an uh, implementation of a smart contract um, and uh, sort of stable coins uh, being the financial instrument on top of that instantaneous uh, you know uh, signing of the contract, etc. So can, there, there's a lot of use cases. It, it can happen yet though for companies internally in Japan, right? In okay. Japan, when at the end, stable coin it's sort of a no-go area. I know that we're blocked for Japanese residents to come in and buy the yen stablecoin on our platform right now. But at some point, I guess you're probably talking to the, the authorities and the regulators in Japan, and you probably get your fingers crossed for a date in the future. Uh, are you ready to announce a date? I am not. Uh, but I, I can say that uh, we do a fair amount of educational session. Um, and the. Uh, Historically, uh, so the Japanese regulator tends to follow what U.S. and uh, European regulators are doing, uh, right? And the fact that stable coins uh, are going to be that the regulatory framework for stable coins are going to be tightened up, and I think there's going to be some sort of a bill that's going to pass uh, in the U.S. Uh, I think within this year or maybe early next year. So once that happens, I think Japanese regulator will start to see how they should be regulating uh, stable coins, uh, they, which they haven't really, uh, uh, w they haven't been able to wrap their head around. But once it is clear in the U.S. and and the Europe, I think it's uh, it's fairly quick from there. So we're, uh, we're we really hope that uh, we get you know Japanese residents, citizens get access to GN and start using stable coins in general, because, you know, uh, cryptocurrency space in Japan, is still big, right? Um, so for p people, ha you know, being able to move money around between exchanges using stable coin, Japanese yen is straightforward, obviously, uh, for Japanese people. So um, there's going to be a lot more volume uh, by, uh, you know, Japanese residents uh, being able to access stable coins. Like I've been a Japanese community that 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 is involved with the INX token, and they are very very excited about the yen stable coin. So maybe I should have them start writing to their representatives in the Diet and saying, guys, it's time to get the GMO coin live and active in Japan. Absolutely, that would be very helpful. All right, spread good. the word. Good. Um, Against Bitcoin, uh, yen stablecoin against Bitcoin, you know, where do you see that going? Because you're right, Japanese have a huge interest in crypto, huge interest. I think I think Japan and South Korea are pretty much you know the the major interests in in the cryptocurrency areas in terms of fervent activity um, and, and, and excitability, and so I think that the, the the, the Bitcoin against GN will be a very important pair, but I think that for it to get real adoption, you're going to have to see Japan turn around and say, okay, because I don't see like a guy in Germany saying, you know what, I'm going to go buy Bitcoin against yen, unless they believe the yen is going to devalue significantly in the future. Right. And in that regard, it makes a lot of sense to buy Bitcoin GN. 
because then you're buying Bitcoin. And if, if like, you know, do, dollar yen, I think over the last year has gone from about 100 to 110. So it's an extra 10% you pick up by buying Bitcoin versus GN as opposed by buying Bitcoin versus uh, Z dollar. And so depending on what you want to choose, you know, if you want, I guess, to have a little bit of extra alpha, if you buy Bitcoin versus GN, maybe you get that extra alpha should the U.S. start to raise interest rates and dollar yen goes higher. Right. Because you pick up that extra 10 percent. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, if stable coin is made available in for, for Japanese uh, residents, uh, it, it'd be interest, interesting to see where the ARB opportunities uh, will go. Right. Uh, uh, like with the Korean market, Japanese market uh, versus the U.S. dollar market, there's always an arbitrage. Uh, the kimchi spread. The yeah. kimchi spread. Yeah, so I think it was twenty percent at one point. It was it was absolutely crazy. But I think that the reason there is because you know, you can't trade dollar Korea outside of Korea, right? Whereas dollar yen you can trade outside of Japan. So I think that there's less of a chance we would have that sort of arbitrage opportunity. I think what people were doing is they were doing the arbitrage and the kimchi spread, and then buying commodities in Korea to get the money out of Korea. Mm-hmm. But I think Japan, you can get the money out because there's a liquid way to do that. So I think that I, don't, I doubt that we're going to see a, you know, a, a, a similar type activity there. But that would be certainly be very exciting. Yeah, um, I mean, go ahead. No, I, I was just saying, you know, what's the expected volume in GN trading? That's a question we just came in. I've got no idea. I think that what we're going to see something is a steady move upwards. I'd say that we're going to start seeing, you know, onboarding activity of people because obviously to trade in our platform, you have to go through KYC and AML. That takes a little bit of time for each individual as they come through and then they get onto our platform, then they start trading these different products. I think we'll see a ramp up and that ramp up, I think will be a trickle and then it becomes a flood and then it becomes a tsunami. And so I think that that's what we see, because obviously when we onboard corporates and institutions as well, it takes a little bit longer. They don't go through an AML KYC. They go through a whole different process, but they also come in with a lot much larger you know, trading sizes. You know, when I would go for the drive in to Morgan Stanley every day, you'd trade, you know, 10, 20, 30 million dollar yen just on the drive in. And when you actually deal with an institutional desk, you know, the actual guy that trades dollar yen sitting at the desk could be trading billions of dollars a day. And that's just, you know, on behalf of customers or on behalf of himself back before Dodd-Frank. And so the institutional customer can be doing just one institutional customer could be doing the same amount of volume as a million customers that are on the retail side. And I think that that's what people, you know, sort of need to understand. Now, I've got an interdealer broker as well. We just bought a company called ILS Brokers. And ILS Brokers deals with banks all day. All day. We've got 40 uh, tier one banks. And I think it'd be very interesting for us to offer the GN stable coin on a voice basis to all of these banks. So the banks would come in and say, look, buy me $10 million worth of GN. We turn around, we buy $10 million on our toy, and then we send it to their wallet. And I think that that's probably where the future is going to go too, because this isn't just going to be a platform traded product. I think it's going to be a voice traded product too. And once we get the liquidity to the levels that we're comfortable, we'll be offering this on an institutional basis, on a voice desk basis, to 40 tier one banks. And then when you have guys coming in saying, I'll buy 5 million, it's a lot different from retail coming in saying, I'll buy $20,000. And I think that we can see something like that, you know, maybe within the next six to nine months. I think that banks obviously have to feel comfortable. And I think that Ken and I hopefully will be doing lots of meetings with banks, getting them comfortable with this product knowing that they can get it from a trusted source and they can deal with it uh, quickly and efficiently, but also that they have a, a place that they can send it to. Because right now, when you're a trader at a bank, when you pick up the phone, you buy from an interdealer broker, you know, it goes to your settlement instructions, which are your bank account in Japan. And we're not, we're not doing that anymore with this here. It'd be going to what's your wallet address at BitGo. And so there's a lot of different things that need to be done in the infrastructure to make sure that banks are comfortable and are, are feeling safe and secure with what we're doing. But given the regulatory aspects that we've all gone through and Ken spent, was it years with NYDFS? One year uh, with NYDFS, one year of prep work uh, internally. So total two years to just get us the license. So you've got two um, years with NYDFS. We've got 
950 days with the SEC, plus we got the FINRA and the SEC ATS, plus with them we got money transmitter licenses from all the states. I mean, it's it's hard to find a more regulatory, pre- regulated playground for the trading of GN and the Z dollar than the GMO INEX uh, partnership. So I'm really excited about what we're doing. Is there anything else, Ken, that you want to, to add that I've maybe missed out? No, uh, I think you're spot on. Um, yeah. All right. Well, don't got to because I must stay. Yeah. So there's one question. It's, will ZUSD be added to INX securities? So I guess the answer would be no, right? Um, well, no, that, a, that doesn't have to be no. Doesn't have so, to be? You know, uh, I think there's a number of changes that are happening in with INX securities that we'll be announcing in the next, I think, week or so. Um, where there'll be a number of different avenues for you to invest in INX securities and put money onto our platform. Z dollar is very fresh in the uh, landscape in that we've only just started trading it today. But that's not to say in a couple of weeks time adding Z dollar, given it's an ERC 20 token runs on the Ethereum network. It's something that it should be easily uh, done for us and available for us to be able to add it to that platform. So. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be able to add it. Um, so that's a very good question. Interesting. All right. Well, thank you very much, Ken. And uh, let, let's see let's see what uh, what becomes. Um, as I said, over the next uh, week, we'll be adding different pairs. Today, it's BTC versus Z dollar uh, and Z dollar versus the US dollar. I think uh, over the next five days, you'll start to see the GN added and crosses against uh, Bitcoin as well. So here goes. Yep. Congratulations, we'll- Ken, and it's great to work with you. Likewise, Douglas. Uh, we'll be announcing all of these rollouts within our Twitter channel, INX Twitter channel, uh, social media channels, etc. So make sure to follow us. And uh, yeah, uh, like Douglas said, it's going to be rolling out in the next you know few few business days. So. Uh, we're very excited. All right. Sayonara. All right. Thank you. Thank you. A one-stop shop for cryptocurrencies and digital securities. When others ran from regulators, we found a way to work with the biggest. The crypto trading powerhouse that brought you the first SEC registered security token IPO offered to the general public is now ready for the ultimate bulls versus bears showdown. The question is, are you? Apply now at inx.co.